assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today is part 2 of the lecture series about bonding situation in metal carbonyls and in this particular lecture we will understand the concept of back bonding the focus of today's lecture is to understand the concept of band back bonding in metal carbonyls as we have seen in the previous lecture that both carbonyl and oxygen has lone pairs but the lone pair which is play present on carbon is donated towards the metal so in this way a sigma bond is formed between metal and carbonyl as we have seen in the previous lecture that here is the example in which carbonyl is donating its electron pair towards the empty d sp3 hybrid orbital of iron so here the oxy uh, carbonyl contains the lone pair that is present in sp hybrid orbital as we have seen in this diagram that this lone pair is donated towards the metal uh, as this is the final geometry or shape uh, this coordinate covalent bond is formed uh, between oxygen and carbon and as a result of this coordinate covalent bond so yeah. due to this development of partial negative charge on carbon and partial positive charge on oxygen this side is attached towards the metal so in this way a sigma coordinate covalent bond is formed between metal and carbon so uh, this is the a form now what is happening that metal can back donate this charge back towards carbon and uh, in this way uh, there are two forms of metal carbonyl bonding in which there is one a form and other is b form so in a form and there is one sigma coordinate covalent bond between metal and carbon whereas in b form there is two bonds one is sigma and other is pi as you saw the sh uh, sign of resonance so actually the metal carbonyl bonding exist in two forms a form and b form in a form there is one sigma bond between metal and carbon whereas in b form there are two bonds one is sigma and other is pi now we can deeply see how this has happened in this diagram so here we can see that there is lone pair on carbon so this lone pair is donated towards metal so there is a sigma uh, then metal can return back this charge density back to towards the carbon now as a second bond is found between metal and carbon so this bond is called as a pi bond so in order to retain the valency of four this a triple bond which is present here so one of the electron pair will shift towards the oxygen and it is converted into a lone pair so in this way there is a charge density back uh, coming from metal towards the carbon so as you see here that the definition of ligand is that ligand is a species that can donate electron pair but carbonyl is a special ligand which is not only able to donate electron density from ligand to metal but it can accept charge density back towards itself as this charge density is backing through the pi bond so that is why the carbonyl ligand is also called as pi acid or a pi acceptor ligand it is called as pi acid according to the lewis acid base concept as according to lewis acid when some species accept the electron pair so it is called as acid now carbonyl ligand is accepting this charge density through the pi bond so that is why carbonyl is also called as pi acid or pi acceptor ligand now we can elaborate further this in this diagram here we can see that uh, this is the empty uh, metal hybrid orbital like uh, if we see here in this diagram this is the empty dsp3 hybrid orbital in case of iron pentacarbonyl this empty hybrid orbital will change depending upon the what is the metal for example if we study this nickel tetracarbonyl its hybridization is sp3 so in case of this complex the empty hybrid orbital will be sp3 similarly in case of chromium hexacarbonyl this hybridization will be d2 sp3 and in this case it is dsp3 so it means that 
the nature of this empty hybrid orbital will change depending upon the metal and depending upon the geometry of the overall complex whereas this orbital is actually the sp hybrid orbital in which that electron pair is present so both these overlap so here a sigma bond is formed now how a pi bond is formed that this is the now filled d orbital of metal and these are the empty pi star orbitals of the car carbonyl these overlap with each other so in this way here you can see a pi bond is formed this is a sigma bond which is formed already and here is the pi bond so as we see when the here a double bond is formed then there will be a double bond between carbon and oxygen in order to retain the valency of four just like here in this example now the question is from which thin air this uh, pi star orbital has come so in order to understand this we must have to know the mot or molecular orbital theory diagram of carbonyl so in this example we can study this so as we are moving from low to up the energy of the system is increasing these are the electrons of carbon like this is the 2s2 and this is 2p2 and these are the electrons of oxygen and valence electrons of the oxygen like 2s2 and 2p4 now these overlap s and s of carbon and s of oxygen overlap to form two uh, orbitals sigma 2s and sigma star 2s and both these electrons are placed here similarly these orbitals of carbon and oxygen p orbitals combine to mix to form sigma 2s sigma 2p and sigma star 2p and sigma star 2s now these are the pi star orbitals which are empty which can facilitate or which can intake the charge density from the metal so these pi star orbitals are actually these pi star orbitals which only we can represent here in mot or molecular orbital diagram so here comes the answer that why metal carbonyls are strongly uh, stable and they are strong complexes uh, as far as their uh, stability is concerned as metal is having no charge and carbonyl is uh, having no charge but still they are stable and this is due to this reason that there actually exist two bonds one is sigma and other is pi between metal and carbonyl and these two bonds provide stability to this complex now again as both these a and b forms are in resonance so in a particular structure there is a shift in the dominant structure like uh, if we see here here we have represented only 100% a form but there is a possibility that metal can back donate charge towards the carbonyl and there lies a pi bond so in this way there is a tendency that maybe this is 100% and this is maybe 0% and this may be 50% and this may be 50% similarly this A form may be 70% and B form may be 30% so it depends upon the factors that either A structure is dominant or B structure is dominant so what are the factors which will contribute either A structure is dominant or either B structure is dominant or either both are equally contributing structures so we will discuss these structures in the next lecture so up till now we have cleared the concept of back bonding yes there must be a, some back bonding as a result of which this metal carbon bond becomes double and as it get doubles it get become more stable so i hope you have understood this lecture if you have any question let me know in the comment section I will answer those questions as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Allah Hafiz.